accept this two house message. How do we get Ephraim to accept? You don't. You proclaim peace throughout the land. Yo veil, proclaim liberty. But you part 25, go out throughout the land and proclaim ye yo veil, liberty. Yes, that's right. Amen. How did Paul Rapshua bring the two houses together? He proclaimed. He didn't sit in front of a laptop. No. <laughs> How many believe that Rapshua didn't have a top lap, I mean a laptop? <laughs> <clears throat> No. Huh? How did Yaakov, Yaakov 1 1 to the 12 tribes scattered abroad? How did he conduct his ministry to all 12 tribes sitting in Jerusalem? Proclaimed by an epistle. Proclaim a finished work. It's a finished work, and when we call people to take an easy compromise, in my own ministry, I've seen two things. I've seen and how you plan something, listen, is the way it grows. I planted two Messianic congregations. About 10 years ago, they're, they're, still, they're still kicking through merger, but they're growing like this. Jews and Gentiles. The rabbi knows the truth of the two houses, but it's my fault, it's not his. I planted it, and I didn't know what I, how I was planting it. So every time I try to straighten it out, Judah and Ephraim, he pushes it back down. Jew and Gentile. Then I try to push it back up. Judah and Ephraim, he pushes it back down. Jew and Gentile. You see what I'm saying? Be careful how you plan something. So it is important to get new brothers and sisters coming out of the church system. Plant it right. Do it right and they'll grow right. They'll grow righteously. They'll bear fruit some 30, some 60, some 100. Amen. Grow it wrong and compromise. Not only will they grow crooked. And you know my father used to have an old saying that when you have a hunchback condition, only the grain can straighten it out. There's not much you can straighten it out unless it's a miracle from Yahweh. It's going to take a miracle to reverse Jew and Gentile and Ha and Yeshua. Won't you plant that? So I'd rather be accused of being a fanatic for truth. Was not Yeshua a fanatic for love and truth? Amen. Yes, he was. And he proved it. Amen? So, brothers and sisters, the call for this union to compromise, the very existence of the union itself, is a response to a recognition that peace has been achieved. Peace. The way for both houses to come together, the road has been paved. Not with good intentions, with the blood of Yeshua. Yeah. Turn your head and say, blood of Yeshua. Yeah. Does anyone understand my message this morning? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. It's a finished work. Yeah. He said it, I believe it. That settles it. And even if we don't believe it, it settles it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ruach boldness in this hour yeah. is more important than methods. Mm. Say it again. If we're really a prophetic movement, which we are, as you can see, Sister Sophia, yeah. Yaakov, what a wonderful, wonderful prophetic word. Oh man, and even the way you turn, you turn in the right direction, brother. I was beginning the Ruach, how do you turn in the right direction? Yeah. I'm glad you can turn toward me. <laughs> Bless you, a blessing on your head. Mazel tov. I mean, what I'm talking about. <laughs> when those prophets turn toward you, I give out. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Our union must declare the provided peace. And we can maintain that peace by not engaging in compromise. Hello? How do we maintain the peace that Yeshua already paid with his blood? Not compromising. So can we make peace between the two houses? No. We can proclaim peace between the two houses, but we are, listen, we are, come on. Fix it. Yeah. We are called to maintain peace. And that's your job. Maintain. How do you maintain the peace that Yeshua has wrought and procured? Proclaim it. Study, seal it, proclaim it. Study, seal it, proclaim it. If you don't study, seal, and proclaim the two house restoration, I'm going to say something that I may regret, but I want to get it on tape. <laughs> Is that tape running? <laughs> if we do not allow this vision, the two houses, to be preached as a core central doctrine of our understanding of scripture, we can take the words Ichobah and write it on our homes, write it on our congregations, write it on our doors. I said it to the Messianic Jewish movement and I become persona non grata, but I know the Ruach had me say, Ichobah, the glory has departed. That's how crucial this message is in this final hour. Yeah. It's the ultimate equalizer. It makes everyone equal. 
It fulfills the promises of peace between Jews, non-Jews, men, women, bonds, free men, slaves. It's the great equalizer. Yeah. Yeah. It's peace. How do we maintain peace? Proclaim. You see how some folks have got this thing mixed up? They're busy not, ooh, 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 let's, let's get some eggshells and let's not step on them because we're trying, we're, we're, we're trying to, take, take, we're trying, we're trying to make peace. That's a critical, crucial misunderstanding, misapplication of scripture. You are not called El Elyon Melchizedek in Matijahu 28, commissioned the disciples and said, go and proclaim peace to all the nations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, proclaim yeah. the message. To all the nations. And that's how we maintain the peace that he wrought. What a different approach. But what a correct approach in this final hour. Wow. Wow. That's what Maaseh Yahweh is. Maaseh Yahweh, his vision, wow. his burden. And by his grace, guess who, guess who gets to do his vision? Good. You do. Yeah. I do. And he counts us as his children, maintaining the peace. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, you look like a maintainer of Yahweh's peace. Maintainer, you are a maintainer of Yahweh's peace. You are a maintainer of Yahweh's peace. How do we maintain peace? Proclaim. No man puts a light under a bushel or under his bed. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You are the salt of the earth. If the salt ha, ha, has lost its saltiness, it is good for nothing. Ha. But to be trodden under foot of men and put in the waste pile of humanity with all the other peace processes of humanity. Name one peace process that ever succeeded. Ask Uncle Joe Stalin and Adolf Hitler if their peace, how their peace process worked out. Or the peace accord between the U.S. and Britain. Or the peace accord between Iraq and Iran. It failed in any attempt, listen, at compromise, brothers and sisters is a misapplication of Maaseh Yahweh. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say Maaseh Yahweh. Maaseh Yahweh. Isn't it beautiful that the word that means burden also means your assigned work, your assigned task, and when you do your assigned work, your assigned task, you're paying him tribute. If we pay tribute, like Webb said last night, you sit down and worship the king. The king! Stand up and worship the king. We give him homage. Homage, we give him honor. That's why the union of two house messianica. Not to be au contraire, not to create new enemies. We have enough in the camp, outside the camp. We have enough enemies. You know, please don't let me be misunderstood. Is our theme song, right? Please don't let me be misunderstood. I'm beyond that, man. I'm done. <laughs> I'm not worried about, I'm praying to be misunderstood because I'm in the, I'm, 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 I'm the numb stage. Yeah. We're with Hashem Yom. Next. <laughs> One Israel, knowing Yahweh, must know that shikuts, please write that word down, shikuts. Strong 8251 Hebrew, shikuts is an eternal enemy. Internal. She could. The external enemy is being lulled into a peace process to somehow take it easy on Judah and Ephraim instead of proclaiming the peace. When someone hears peace, will they come? What made you respond to Yeshua's love? My peace I give you, not as the world gives it, I give it up to you. And you responded to, to an established peace. Right. And now you're called to maintain the peace between the two houses. She could. She could is an eternal internal enemy. Shikuts, listen, is the root word for sheket in Hebrew. Sheket, silence. Sheket, shikuts. It also can mean abominable, detestable practices to Yahweh. Someone's enjoying this morning. Forget the food, all right? I'll keep it hot for you. Just relax. Right. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Huh? We've got to understand this. We've got to understand. Amen, brother. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Strong 8251. We have a lot to cover. Shikuts means abominable, detestable to Yahweh, but it's also the root word for silence. Is there a connection? Yes, there is. 
Unclean silence. The union must not be silent. We must declare the peace. We must declare the feast. We must declare the Shabbat. We must declare and seal our prophetic vision, our prophetic word, and his prophetic names. We must not shikut, either silence, abomination. Isn't it interesting? The same root word is used for abominable religious pagan practices as is used for silence because silence in Yahweh's ears can be deafening. When we know the truth, and we don't proclaim it. <laughs> Rabbi, pastor, I'm calling you to go home next Shabbat and preach a two-house message. Go back to the Caribbean, go back to the Philippines, go back to where Yahweh has sent you to this conference and preach the things you were fearful to preach before. Preach the glorious, wonderful, Latter-day two-house restoration of Israel and get away from the abominable sin of Shikuts. Don't be sad, Yohan Mabil, what was his calling? In, your, in Yeshayahu 40, cry aloud and spare not. Cry aloud and spare not. Prepare the way for Yahweh. That is our calling. Preparing the way for Yahweh. Hallelujah. Amen. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Our union must not succumb to a tendency to be Tamai Shikuts. Unclean silence. Engage in unclean silence. We must display the spirit of Eliyahu Hanavi, of Yohanan Hamadbil. Unclean silence, listen, leads to an attitude of pain. How, how many know we're trying to rid both houses of evil? Yeah. We want to point out the evil and the abominations of both houses. Yeah. You'll never do it by shikuts. The definition of shikuts is abominations. Pagan, detestable abominations. Yeah. It's the same word used for silence. It cannot be done. You've got a peace. There, there is no process. It is established. Yahweh is waiting for you to proclaim that peace. Amen? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> How many know you cannot proclaim peace silently? <laughs> when peace comes, it's such a hard commodity to get. Peace is such a hard thing to attain. The world will kill for peace. The world pays $90 an hour for peace. To psych 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 psychiatrist. All right? Peace is priceless. Money can't buy love and neither can't buy peace. And the world will give anything for peace. Even their pagan practices. You understand me? They will give up their pagan practices if you do not partake in their paganism. C can we talk? I mean, this is an open forum, amen? As long as I have the mic, it's open, amen? <laughs> Sister Karen, amen? Baruch Hashem Yom. We are so quick to point out other people's shortcomings in paganism in both houses, but by be keeping silent and believe and compromising, instead of maintaining the peace, we partake in shikut. Listen, the same word used of the Canaanites. And you listen, I don't care if you're an Israelite. If you keep silent and you don't proclaim this message, Yahweh says, unto thee, unto thy house, it is shikuts. Wow. Turn to your hand and say shikuts. shikuts. You and I differentiate, Yahweh does. And he says, to him that knoweth to do good and doth it not, to him it is sin. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Yes. No shikuts no in the union of two houses. Nope. Messianic congregations. Yo, Joshua 24, 15. As for this house, we will serve God. I said we will serve God. Before we serve food, we will serve God. I didn't come 2,000 miles to eat. I came all that to all that way to teach, to learn, and to end this period of shikut that has plagued our people for 2,700 years. It's a plague. Turn to your neighbor and say, play. Yeah. Rabbi, I'll never be as blessed it when you preach this truth. Try it. Yeshua said, when you do what I tell you to do, you'll know if what I'm teaching is from Yahweh or from men. When you do it. You know how you'll know if this, 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 the peace has been accomplished and you've been called to maintain the peace? Teach it. Yeah. Do it and you'll know it's true. Yeah. Just do it. Let it be said of you as it was said of Bo Jackson. You know truth. 
Bone knows baseball, bone knows peace. Remember that commercial? Oh yeah. But you know the peace, and there's no process to peace. There's a person who has accomplished that peace. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Our Messiah must include conviction. Number five, number six, if you're taking notes, I don't know, I don't know, somewhere between number five and number seven. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't believe how many know Rabbi Moshe doesn't believe in three quarters in this. No. As they learn in the cemetery. I mean seminary. Baruch Hashem Yama. Our massa must, listen, must include conviction to recapture 50% of the unemployed workforce. Now who's unemployed? Ladies? And one chord I want you to say. One, count of three. We are. We are. One, two, three. We, we are. are. Very good. It's a good thing we rehearsed. <laughs> In the church system, all the ladies can do is be a cheerleader for their man. Ra, ra, system, ba. Leroy, he's my man. If he can't do it, no one can. <laughs> The only thing missing in most Sunday places is a mini shkoit with about socks to come up and go into the pom pom. <laughs> but in Israel, let it not be so. In Israel, we are going to recover 50% of the workforce and let the women find their place in Israel. What is a woman's place? Listen, 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 hold it, hold it now, hold it. Listen, a, listen, a woman's place is the one given to her by Yahweh and not by you, Baba. <laughs> Shlichim, Nevim, Morim, Rabim, the fivefold ministry of Ephesians 4. Anything Yahweh can do and empowers a woman to do, she can do. We will never restore the kingdom to Israel without recovering 50% of the workforce that has been thrown onto the un spiritual unemployment lines by the system that rejects the truth of all Israel. Somebody give him praise in the house of Yahuwah this morning. We've got to recover 50% of our strength. Not just our helpmate, but a key puzzle in the restoration of Israel. Yes. Women have been told what they can't do in the union of two house messianic congregations. Come to this board of rabbis and we'll tell you what you can do. Because you can do all things through Messiah Yeshua who strengthened you. Hallelujah. In order for Israel to be restored, Deborahs need to be raised up. Junos need to be sent to the nations. Yeah. Rhodas and Phoebes need to be established. Priscilla needs to leave their home fellowship along with Aquila. It has to happen. It has to be now. It has to be restored. It has to be refreshed. Now is that time. He's right. Can't throw the baby out with the bath water. Amen. In the union of two house messianic congregations, what is the woman's place? Anything Yahweh assigns her. Yeah. Oh man? Yes. That may not sit well with some folks. And you know why? Because we've been so conditioned to the Sunday way of doing things that we don't see what happened to her. Miriam did anything she wanted to under Moses' authority. Deborah did anything she wanted to with her husband. Hello? Yeah. Women can do whatever Yahweh calls them to do. And without women being restored to their rightful place, we, we will wind up like many other organizations. Yeah. I want to say something else. The Union of Two House Messianic Congregations is determined, is purposed, is committed, is fully, fully set upon the reinstitution, reordination, repatriation of rabbis. Listen, rabbis from the house of Ephraim. Oh. Who told you you have to be Jewish to be a rabbi? That's right. Some of you just walked in, oh, you know, Rabbi Moshe is so gracious. He, he's referring to everybody as a, as a, as a rabbi, and I'm not we, 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 we,